party people what's going on samaj marsh i'm the founder of bluedeathvalue.com and i want to welcome you guys back to a super special edition of inside the valley the podcast that's devoted to relentless coverage of ant football of course i got my two co-hosts with me first up former ant wide receiver and a native of greensboro north carolina my man doug douglas fresh Doug fresh brown what's going on doug hey what's up guys aggie pride good to see you guys man glad to be on almost, almost that that big old day february 1 man we almost around the oh corner, man right? man we're gonna talk all about that but of yes, course sir. we got uh my main man the man in the middle always speaking facts is not talking riddle he is a long time ant insider beat right on blue .com for over two decades the current president of the greensburg chapter the aaf also my right hand man mr craig turner what's going on ct hey what's CT? going on guys how you pride um back Thank again yes sir back yes, sir. again you gotta get get, <laughs> get get ready to get into that good part of the year that real Ooh. good part of the year. Man, listen, listen, we got we gonna have a fun show tonight. We got um a special guest in the building. I know everybody knows by now. We've been we've been promoting all the last couple of days. We got uh AT uh men's head basketball coach Monty Ross. He's gonna join us in a second. But also uh tomorrow, that's like that's like the national holiday for us Aggies, right? February one, um uh, the day everything changed. And uh, for the first time, I guess in a long time that I can remember, we actually have a basketball game that's going to commemorate that holiday. And that's going to be against a uh, fellow HBCU, uh, Hampton. Yeah. Uh, and that's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And also we're going to talk all about what's been going on in the football program since the last time we met. We got a uh, schedule got released. We got a new office of coordinator, Dougie. And, uh, and uh, Craig, the thing you would probably put on this earth for, National Signing Day is next week, and so we're gonna do a preview of National Signing Day and all the all the gifts we're gonna get under our tree next Wednesday. But uh, before we before we do all that, let's go ahead and uh, cut to the chase and bring in the man of the hour, one of the most uh, popular men in that guess Aggie Nation right now. Our head men's basketball coach, Coach Monty Ross. Coach Ross, how you doing? What's up, guys? How you doing? Hey, Coach Ross, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, first of all, let me say this. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of talk. Like when you come on this show, this is like the Breakfast Club. You know, like oh, no. God, <laughs> DJ MV. You know, when you come on here, if your stuff not right, if you start rapping and it's not right, it goes viral. So I'm ready. You know, what I mean, whatever y'all got, give it to me. I'm ready. <laughs> well, look, well, look, here, coach. Look here, coach. This is a long time coming, but we had, we had, to, we had, to, we had to make sure you know you was the right man for the for the for the job before before you brought you on here. Cause look, 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 coach. We keep it real on inside the valley, right? We, we, okay. We don't show you, coach, All right. right there. All right. The way things started was kind of rough, and we we, we, you know, we came out the gate was a little shaky. Mm -hmm. we didn't know really what we had, but I think I can speak for my by my two co-hosts here. There was a moment in the season, maybe different moments for each of us, but for me, there was something I saw. I was like, you know what? I know we're not winning every game, but that's a well-coached basketball team. <laughs> and whoever, whoever's putting this team together knows what they're doing. And that's what I was all in. Because because I, I know basketball. And I know what it looks like. And sometimes you don't have everything you need to be, you know, you know, win every game, but you can see the progress. So for you, Coach, you know, right now, I guess the team is uh, we're six and what's our record right now? It ain't that great, but what is all it? I know is that we're four and four in the CAA. <laughs> there you go, there you go, six and 15 <laughs> overall, four and four in CAA. But That's right, we got we got a lot of momentum for you, Coach Ross. When did you kind of say, you know what, uh, I can see it coming to fruition? What, what was that, that aha moment for you? Well, I think it was probably uh, towards the end of. The, the, the end of November, the beginning of December, we played a couple games where, you know, like you said, we didn't get the result that we wanted in terms of the win, but the progress was was evident. And one of the things that haven't been through this before at the University of Delaware, when you're trying to build a program from the ground up, you have to look for little measures of success. And one of the things that we challenged our guys every day to do was, and I stole this from Inky Johnson, 
could we be committed to the process of what we were doing without being emotionally attached to the results? So after we played High Point, and that was one of those games where I started to see it clicking. I started to see it because High Point was a very, very talented team. And we had the lead in that game. We had a six-point lead with probably about eight minutes, seven minutes to go in the game. And we just didn't finish the game. But that next practice we had, you would have thought that we were an undefeated team. The way our guys came out, they were flying around. They were talking. They were just There was just an energy in the gym. And I stopped it. And I told them, guys, I said, look, man, I talk to you guys all the time about being committed to the process without being emotionally attached to results. You guys are showing it right now. And I said, bigger than basketball. This thing is bigger than basketball. If you can operate like that in life, where you're just committed to the process, whatever it is, whatever you're doing in business, in life, outside the basketball court, you're going to be successful. So that's when I sort of saw it turning. And I knew that if we just kept, we were heading in the right direction. And if we just kept the faith with these guys, that we would be okay. Coach, listen, you got, you got to share the secret because I got two kids down the hallway and a wife and none of them listen to me, right? They, I, I got zero buy-in in my household. How did you get such buy-in that quick with these with these you know cast of newcomers, right? Well, I, I, it, it's I think all young people want direction. I think all people want to be uh, told how to be successful. They want to be shown how to be successful. Now, what you have to do as a leader is you have to practice what you're preaching. And that's how we try to run our program is every single day. I don't ask them to do anything in terms of working their tails off that I'm not going to do as a head coach and that my staff is not going to do as assistant coaches. So it's one of those. And it's a, a old uh, tale that's always told that. And it's true that they don't care how much, you know, when they know how much you care. And I think oh. what they what they saw was how much we truly loved them, how much we truly cared for them, how much we truly wanted the best for them, not just on the court, but we showed them off the court, in the classroom, socially, all those types of things. So I think they started to click like, yo, this thing is not just about basketball for these guys. This thing is about life. And that's what we were trying to show them. That's what we were living in front of them. We wanted to be examples. For me, I have to be an example to them of, you know, one day they're going to be a husband. So I have to be an example on how to be a husband. One day they're going to be a father. I have to be an example on how to be a father. One day they're going to so – and it goes down the line. So we always are trying to show them exactly that we're all in this thing together, and it's not just us telling you what to do. It's all of us in it together. All right. Very nice. Coach, I appreciate that, man. And I heard you speak about the process and – you know, we have a lot of folks in the Aggie Nation that aren't really patient people. And, and I think that, that shows a lot on uh, the Blue Death Valley website. But talk to us. Tell us about uh, your hiring process. Tell us about your relationship with Athletic Director Director Earl Hilton and Chancellor Martin. And also tell us, you know, what are the things that drew you to a and and made you even interested in uh, taking a job here? Well, I'll, I'll take that last one first. One of the things that made me interested in coming to a and was, one, Obviously, I went to school at Winston-Salem State that was right down the road. And so was was familiar with a and had been here for a couple of g had been here for a couple of Aggie Fests. Uh, so I had some uh, familiarity with a and So I, I was attracted to it one way. One reason was that. The other reason was it being in the CAA. The CAA was a league that I cut my teeth in as a new head coach when I was at the University of Delaware. And we had to build that program at the University of Delaware from the ground up. And I always tell people, shoot, when we took over Delaware, it was subterranean. It was below ground level. And we had to build it up. So I, I was really looking forward to that challenge uh, here at A&T. And then, you know, I, I took over in, in this era, this time, this that HBCUs are, they're hot. They're hot. They're, they're, they're where a lot of people want to be. A lot of people want to send their uh, young people to HBCUs. And now you talk about adding on a and being the best HBCU in the country. 
Well, why not? Why not? Yeah. I really thought that uh, we could come down here and get the job done. Now, with that being said, if we're going to build it where it's sustainable year after year after year, we can't just have a flash in the pan quick fix. We have to do it the right way. We have to build it on a firm foundation so that we can be competing for championships year after year after year after year. And that takes time. It takes time to get it to that point. So I'm 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 well I'm well aware of the naysayers. I'm well aware of the doomsayers. I'm well aware of that. But you know what? That comes along with the territory of being a head coach. It, watch. We could be, you know, 8-0 and o in the CAA right now. We could be 8-0 and o in the CAA, and there will be people who would be complaining, who would be upset, who would be so. It's 10% of the people that no matter what you do, you're not going to be, you're not going to please them. It's 10% of the people that no matter what you do, you're going to please them. You could be the worst in the world and you're going to please them. And then it's 80% who are going to judge you on, on your merits. And, you know, for me, it's all part of the job. I understand the passion uh, that Aggie Nation has. And that's the other thing. When I started doing my research before, even, even before the interview process, started doing my research and I have a few family members that I called who are uh, Aggies, I was blown away by the passion of Aggie Nation. I mean, absolutely blown away. When you talk about most schools, it's men's basketball, football, and that's it. When you talk about a and it's football, men's basketball, women's basketball, softball, track and field, bowling, don't Every forget bowling. Sport. I was about to say, don't, don't forget bowling. Bowling, bowling we, got, we got a young lady who just told her, her she just throw another perfect game. Like all that Lord stuff. Yes, 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 yes. All that stuff is important to Aggie Nation. So I get it. I'll take all the hits that we're receiving right now because I know the passion that lies within uh, the alums, the student body. All of those, that passion is what I... I, I, it drives me every single day to make this program the best it can possibly be. Now, you talk about my relationship with A.D. Hilton, um, Chancellor Martin. Until I got here, there was no relationship. But my first meeting it was on Zoom with A.D. Hilton. When he speaks to you about certain things, his passion comes out as well. His knowledge for athletics comes out as well. And that drew me uh, to him. And since I've been here, he's been such a, 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 a supporter, uh, such a, a, a sounding board for me um, that it's been, it's been tremendous. And, and one of the things, and I'm not going to shy away from it, uh, one of the things I told A.D. Hilton, and I'll say it to Aggie Nation, I'll say it to you guys right here, we came here to, to turn this program around and to win championships to win the CAA, to go to the NCAA tournament. And that's what drives me every single day. That passion that Aggie Nation has to do that, um, it's, it's been tremendous. And I love that type of pressure because I know, like, for instance, tomorrow night, yeah. it's going to be absolutely stupid. Yeah, I, see, 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 Coach, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm glad you understand that. I, I was going to tell you. I was going to tell know. you. Yes. And, and, and because watch. It was absolutely stupid when we were at Hampton. I mean, I was this right. close to my assistant and couldn't hear him. That's how <laughs> loud it was. And and but that type of passion, man, you you can't put a price tag on that. You can't put a price tag on that. So, you know, the passion that Chancellor Martin has for athletics for the university, AD Hilton has for athletics for the university. I knew it was important for me to surround myself with a staff with a group of men that would really really understand what we were getting ourselves into and be willing to be vulnerable to you know whatever it takes to get it done uh jeff rafferty was somebody that was with me for nine years at the university of delaware so he helped me build that program so he knows exactly how to get it done how i think how i feel and those types of things. And so 
grabbing him and getting him to come down here with me uh, ha has been uh, tremendous because, again, that familiarity that I have with him, he has with me. And then the other guys on my staff that I was able to uh, get, Ricky Moore, who was a great player at UConn, won a championship, a national championship as a player, won a national championship as a coach at UConn, just a wealth, wealth of, of, of basketball knowledge. Um, Dorian Long is another guy from uh, the Philadelphia area who has deep, deep ties in, in the Philadelphia area uh, in terms of recruiting. So that's going to help us. Ricky Moore is, is fantastic with North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida recruiting. And then we, we have uh, a Colin Daly who's our – I shouldn't just limit him to one title – because he's our video coordinator, he's our uh, he's our de facto. Anything you need to find on uh, Twitter, internet, or whatever, he finds that for us. Uh, he's our director of basketball operations. He's our slash uh, everything. So you know how there was a quarterback, uh, Cordell. Uh, what was Cordell's last name that was on the Pittsburgh Steelers? Cordell. And they called him slash. Cordell. Yeah. Put else for it. Yeah. And so that's what Colin yeah. Daly is. Yeah. He's like Slash. Oh, he so does slash, any and everything yeah. that we ask yeah. him to do. And then we got another hire, Pat Heron. Pat is from Charlotte. And Pat's ties, he uh, played and coached at North Met down in Charlotte. So his ties in the Charlotte, North Carolina area run deep. So I had to get a group of guys that, one, that we could understand the passion uh, of a and Two, and probably most importantly, understand the need to get good players. Because watch, if you want to be a good coach in any sport, any sport, I don't care what it is. If you want to be a good player, you want to be a good coach, get good players. If you want to be a great coach, get great players. So these guys understand that, and that's what we're striving to do. Well, Coach, I got to ask you real quick. So you, you you've been you you've been in the CAA for uh, you were head coach for ten years. You've been all around. You, you know. You know the landscape. As far as facilities and resources and all that, how far away are we from being where we need to get to? And do you see like a, a definite process of, of of us achieving? Absolutely, positively. We we the conversations that we're having uh, right now about the upgrades to the facilities are right in line with the other places that are. Uh, that we're competing against. And that's very, very important. New weight room uh, has been discussed, new lounge, new locker room. All those things are right in line with uh, the teams that we're competing against. And now the biggest thing uh, that's come about here of late, NIL, collectives. Like yeah. those are the things, those are the conversations that we're having now. And a couple of those conversations have been started not by me, but by alums that want to help and want to see us succeed in that space. It's a brand new space for A&T, but it's a space that they understand is needed uh, in, order to, in order for retention of your current players and also for the attraction of new players. Uh, so we are right online. And I know, you know, people will look and see where we are right now. But I would just ask them for patience for us as a team and the program, for us as an administration. It's going to take time to get to where we need to get to. But we are having those conversations actively and we will get there sooner rather than later. And see, me and Craig were just talking before the show about NIL, and we was like, man, we got this, we got one of the best backcourts in, in, in the conference. I hope the big guys don't come and poach these guys at the end of the season. So with NIL, like, how, how do you do, do, is that almost a necessity now that you got to, like, just find a way to keep your, you know, your, 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 your select few top guys or, or, because, I mean, you know, you see football happens all, it's happening right now. Um, and I guess the same thing with basketball. So, like, how, yeah. how do you insulate yourself against that? Well, I mean, you said it. Like, our backcourt is, you know, I'll put them up against anybody. 
uh, especially in our conference. And, you know, they not only are they good players, Landon and Cam, they're tremendous, tremendous people. And their joy, their joy to coach, their joy to be around off the court. Uh, and that's what I talk to them about all the time is this thing, again, is bigger than just basketball. It's about us making you successful off the court. Like this thing is not just about the next four years. It's about the next 40 years. How can yeah. I help you be successful off the court? But like you said, in the, in, in the immediate, it is. It's about, you know, we're going to have to do some things to uh, ensure that, because here, here's my thing. And, and I'll just, if, if let's say, and, and they're going to come, it, it's just the reality of, where we are right now in college athletics, good or, or, or indifferent. They're going, if they come to one of those guys and they say, Hey, look, we're going to offer you X. All right. Hopefully we can say, even if we can't get to X, if we yeah. can get to a number that is, you know, close or near, hopefully the coach. It's like a sweetheart deal, deal, right? Like I'm a sorry. Sweetheart deal. It was like a sweetheart deal, but yeah. by, because we're already here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're already here. The coaching that they've been given, the hopefully the development that they feel like they've been given will help them to make that decision. Instead of going someplace and having to start all over, um, hopefully they will. And and the other thing, the the sad part about it is you have a few individuals that you know some of us know about some of us don't know about uh that have left and don't play you know what i mean very good players here at ant or at this level but decided that the grass was green or someplace else and now they're not playing the bottom line is these young people as much money as you can offer them yeah that's going to be fine for them for two months but when they're not playing when they're on that bench like this, they're not professionals yet. They're not 35 and seeing their retirement age uh, right around the corner where they say, okay, I'm just collect my money and I'm good to go. No, these guys are competitors. They want to play. So when you leave and the grass is not always greener and you're yeah. not playing. So sometimes taking that, taking that chance of not playing is, a road that some young people don't want to go down because they love the game so much. And shoot, man, the opportunity that you have here at A&T, not only on the basketball court, but academically and socially, it's second and, to none. And that's going to be evident tomorrow. Hey, guys, Doug, Craig, that's going to be evident tomorrow night. There's no better recruiting tool than what you're going to see inside Corporate Sports Center, 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, 7 p.m. I'm, 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 yeah, man, you're going to have people showing up at halftime. Yeah, yeah, so you might get to like 6.30 because I heard the, uh, the lower levels are already sold out, so all the reserves are sold out, yes. and uh, general mission is going fast. So it, yes. uh, it's, it's February 1. We're going to be honoring the, I want to say, what, what number is this? This is the 64th anniversary of the sit-in movement uh, at uh, Woolworths, the A&T floor. Walked down the street and uh, went downtown and made history. We're going to be honoring those gentlemen, those heroes. And also, uh, from a marketing standpoint, it's going to be Greek night. So, you know, you, all the the, uh, the the students are going to be excited about They're going to be jumping around, dancing. And, uh, man, it's just going to – and then Hampton. We always seem to play Hampton on big days. So, we, we play Hampton in Virginia on MLK Day, right? And that was a crazy finish. Yes. So that, was, that was one of the wildest finishes I've seen in, in probably this whole year. Um, they scored to take the lead in the last seconds. And you did something. This is what solidified to me how good of a coach you were. You didn't call timeout, right? You let you let uh you let uh you let your 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 guard uh, Cam, yeah, Cam go down Cam's go down good. the court, go down the court, he put up that floater. I think it was like 1.2 seconds left for, for the for the game winner. But well it even shouldn't even got to that. It shouldn't it shouldn't even got to that coach. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something that happened right before he scored. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they had about 40 guys on the damn court, coach. That should have um, been a technical foul, two shots, and the ball. Yeah, man. Look at that. that. 
That's crazy. Yeah, he had to navigate a whole lot <laughs> in did. that in that moment, you know. And that, you know, one of the things, and I talked about it after the game. One of the things that we always we always practice those end of game situations. And yeah. if a team scores against us and it's five seconds or more on the clock, we're not calling timeout. Just go. And if it's less than five seconds, then we'll call timeout and we'll run one of our end of game specials to get the ball at a certain spot on the floor. But, you know, my, my, my theory and philosophy in that situation is, so you want me to call timeout when Cam has the ball to give it back to Cam? Yeah. I'm not, not going to do that. And, and that gives the defense time to set up for the other team. What we want to do is catch them exactly how we caught them, where they're celebrating a shot that they made, and now you can get it in quick before they get an opportunity to set up and, you know, have a have a floater that goes in from Cam Shell. Yeah. Well, Coach, that was a truly a tremendous play, um, very impressive. But what was most impressive or just as impressive was the inbounds play you drew up, I think maybe uh, when you were down two, uh, just two possessions before, or down two, uh, you drew up a play for Cam. No, excuse me, you drew up a play – um not for cam you give a play I drew a play uh, for landon yeah and then yeah. you ran him off the heat of screen and he could yeah. hit him with the pocket pass and he caught it right in step and, and hit a three so yeah you know what's funny was you know what's funny about that so we draw up the play in the huddle and as we're coming out of the huddle landon turns to me he says coach do you want me to jump into the defender or you want me to just go ahead straight and lay it in i'm like what you're gonna be open for a three? Just shoot the ball, man. <laughs> it was an awesome play design, man. And that's one of those moments that Samaj was talking about where you can see the execution, right? The play call and also the execution. The kids knew exactly sense, what man. to do. Um, and, and to, to make that play call and, and to see it executed and take the lead, and then having the wherewithal again at the end of down play at the end of the game. Everybody knew what they were doing on the floor, and uh, just evident that you guys had communicated that. And that's awesome. And we always say little things like that'll win you a ball game or two. You know, throughout the season, nah, just being disciplined and, and our discipline showed, and then Samaj uh, highlighted where Hampton wasn't as disciplined uh, in their moment of success. So we, nah, we appreciate I, that and uh, keep up the good work, man. That's awesome. I appreciate it, Doug. Thanks, man. Hey, Craig. So what are you what are you most excited about tomorrow? Because you go, I know you're gonna be in attendance. You got you got your uh, season tickets. So so what yeah. are you looking forward to tomorrow in that, in that showdown against Hampton? Uh, Hampton, last time Hampton was down here, it, it almost turned into a, a free for all. Oh, it's going to be a right. very, that's yeah, right. it, uh, it. it's a, it's extremely intense when you, when you come into Corbett, the fan, the, our fans, we're one of the few places where fans are really directly on the court. Just about uh -huh. they were well, they are on the court and they, they don't let up. They, they don't let up. So, you know, it's going to be heated battle. Uh, we just need to, we, you know, I just want everybody to, you know, keep in mind that, you know, it is a basketball game. Is yeah, let's not yeah. turn it into a neighborhood brawl. No, um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things, and I've heard some stories about that, some stories about Central, and you know, one of the things that we talk to our guys about is we we we're, we're tough as nails. We're tough as nails. We're not going to back down from anybody. We 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 don't take anything. But like you said. At the end of the day, we're playing basketball. We're not gangsters. We're not, you know, fighters. Um, we're, we're basketball players, and we want to uh, make a good impression of the name on the back of the uniform, but most importantly, that name on the front of the uniform. We don't want to embarrass it in any way, and I think our, our, our young people that we have do a great job of it, and I can't say enough about them. Hey, Coach, just a little quick, a few more questions. I know you got to finish your, your game planning and, and preparing for tomorrow because we all going to be in the building looking forward to it. Um, but let's go through your, your your whole resume again. So you you played your college ball at West Salem State. And, yes. you know, we're not going to hold it. We're not going to hold that against you tonight. But, uh, <laughs> but, but you're, you're a proud Ram and you uh, you play under the legendary coach uh, Clarence Big House Gaines. And also, you had a, 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 a infamous teammate, I guess you would say, uh, one Stephen A. Smith, and uh, he actually came supported you earlier this year when we played Central. It was a whiteout, and uh, this is what we call understanding the assignment, right? Because, because, uh, because, 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 Mr. Stephen A. This he didn't come and show up. He showed up and showed out. He was wearing white from head to toe, and uh, looking sharp in the process. Talk a little bit about your relationship with him and uh, 
And and what was it like, you know, uh, being in the same locker room with him? Well, the funny thing about that night was leading up to it, I told him and he brought a bunch of my teammates down with him uh, to the game. I said, look, and I told his assistant, uh, I said, look, it's a whiteout. So you guys got to wear white, da, 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 whatever. So he gets there and none of the other people have on white and he has on white. And he's like, yo, man, I had I was my white stuff was in L.A. I had my person ship it to me personally to make sure I had on white. And now you tell me all these other people don't have on white. So he was he was he was giving me a hard time about that. Um but you know, it's just the the brotherhood that we have, uh, his love, his support, my love for him, my love, my support for him, uh, and it's a group of us that uh, we're in a big group chat, te- group text, and we just keep each other, you know, loose and keep each other honest. Like you know, I always laugh. I'll tell people sometimes on the show you'll see him look down at his phone, and he'll pick it up and he'll respond. A lot of times it's one of us getting on him about something he just said or something he should say or something like that. But he's a very uh, loyal friend. Uh, he's very, very loyal um, to, to that, you know, that tight inner circle that he has. He'll do anything for us, do anything, uh, any favors that you ask him to do. And I always tell people, people say, well, you know, how was he back in college? I said, shoot, man, when we were in college, it was six of us listening to him. Now it's 60 million people listening to him. <laughs> And he's still yelling about the Knicks and New York and all that kind of stuff like he always has. I'll tell you a funny story about him. So we're in practice one day, and I'm on the point, and he's on the wing. So at this point, he's probably about 0 for 8 from the field. So I come down, and I pass it to him, and he makes it. So now he's 1 for 9 from the field. So the next time I'm down – He's like, yo, ma, give it to me. Give it to me, man. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm like, whoa, buddy. You go for nine. You're not hot. <laughs> but he can, really shoot. he can shoot the ball. And we used to have a great time in practice. And more importantly, we used to have a great time after practice in the calf, uh, in the dormitories. Uh, those are just, you know, tremendous, tremendous experiences. And, and really, for me, shoot, what is it, you know, 31 years later, 30 some odd years later, you know, there's still that tight knit bond uh, that we have. And that's what I try to tell my, my, my current players is these guys that you're in this gym with right now, you're going to have a bond with for life. And all of you are going to go off. We hope you're going to be wildly, wildly successful. And that bond is what's going to keep you humble. It's going to keep you grounded uh, all the time. So, it, 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 we had some great times as teammates. We have great times now as friends and as brothers. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a special, special, uh, special relationship that we have. And it's funny you talk about those off the court connections and the relationship you have away from basketball. Because if you look at this season, in my opinion, one of the turning points that, that happened for this program was not during a game, but it was actually. Uh, on an off day when you had uh, a special press conference and you guys made a roster addition, a young gentleman from the area, 13-year-old guy. Is uh, he? You, so you, yeah. you, you, recruit, you recruiting early, but you brought in a gentleman by the name of Israel Izzy Matthews, a uh, 13-year-old gentleman, and uh, he has some health issues he's battling, but you brought him into the fold and changed his whole his perspective and, and brightened up his face and you could tell that it really resonated with him. Uh, and I think it resonated also with your players, uh, that goodwill that you guys uh, created. And from that point on, it seemed like, you know, the team had a little more pep in that step. Tell me about that that day, because I was there. That was a great press conference. Tell me about that day and this, this guy named Izzy. Well, you know, Izzy, like you said, is a young man that's had some, some challenges, and he's a big fan of um, A&T basketball. And of our team so for us to be able to invite him into the fold like that really to be honest with you guys man it did more for us and our team than it did for izzy uh izzy is head over heels um about aggie athletics period but you know 
it's important for our guys to know and our guys to understand they are role models. You know, as much as Charles Barkley would like to say, you're not a you are. You, you're just you're, you're a role model, and we want to show them that it's as important for us to be involved in the community because we need every single person in that community to look at us and say they are a part of us. They're not just those guys that play basketball on the court that they can't touch. No, we want them to be able to know that they can touch, they can feel us, they can be a part of of, of our world, uh, for lack of a better term. And it, it, it's so important to us. Like God has gifted us with, with a blessing that, you know, and I always believe like if you take that blessing and you just go in the corner and hide and just hover it, well, that's not why God gave it to you. He gave it to you so you can be a blessing to others. And that's what we try to do with everything that, uh, that we have, that we are fortunate to have is how can we help others? How can we be uh, servant leaders uh, in the community? And, and that's what we try to do at every turn. So Izzy is, that's our guy. He's our, uh, he, he, he's a guy that, you know, when he comes around, he makes us laugh and, uh, and, and he loves it. So it, it does our heart well to see how much it, 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 it does for he and his family. That's awesome. So tomorrow night, uh, 7 p.m., get that right, 7 p.m. Y'all better get there early if you want to get, you know, your seat ready and your popcorn. Yeah, 6.30 and, uh, may be too late. They better get there yeah. at 6. And and, I, and uh and Doug, I think the I think the pet band is back now. I think um last couple of games the pet band's been there. Pet band uh, is back. And uh it's, it's gonna be Greek night. DJ's still gonna be doing his thing. Craig's gonna be uh in the in the crowd hyping it up, doing the Tootsie Roll and and you know yeah, Craig. <laughs> get, get, getting everybody live. But uh so 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 so, uh, so Doug it, so, Doug, anything else you want to throw at Coach before you let him out of here? Uh, Coach, man, I, I just want to say thank you. And, uh, you know, I know my father from time to time travels with you guys. And, you know, I do my best to try to keep him in line. But he's all yours, though. So you, you hey, yo. All right. So let me tell you a funny story about your dad. So he took us down to uh, – he picked us up in Alabama. All right. So okay. we're playing in a tournament down there. We got three games. Now, you know, when he goes to a game – He's head to toe in A&T gear, all right? So during our first game down there, the referee comes over to me and he says, Coach, you got a guy over there that if he doesn't stop yelling at me, I am going to throw him out of here and give y'all a tech. I'm like, what guy are you talking about? So he points over to your dad, Doug, and I say with a straight face, I say, I don't know who that guy is. That guy's not with us. <laughs> but hey, that's right that's right off the hook. He couldn't give us a tech or anything like that. But I think he did make Pops move up to the upper deck, though, because he was sitting right on the floor and he was giving it to him. You know, he's passionate, passionate yeah, about yeah. the A and T sports. Yeah, man. Well, I got it honest. So that's why I pick and choose when, when I come down there and I'm on the sideline. But yeah, you're right. He's very passionate. And he's a supporter, but man, he's gonna have you back 100. percent Yes, he does. Yes, you know, he does. I love him. Definitely gonna right. keep you safe out there on that road. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, when you guys have a man, so yeah, but keep at it, man. Keep at it for sure. Um, and one last thing, I would like to ask you, Coach. You mm -hmm. know, for prospective student athlete who's interested in uh, probably joining your team at ANT or having a chance to come to ANT and compete, uh, what kind of, what type of advice would you give them, um, just in terms of their development and their progress and things they could work on um, to meet the mark and and to have some of the qualities and and the skill set that you were looking for in a, in a type of player? Well, the first thing I would say is tell them to make sure that they grow to be about 6'9". Okay, That's the I like first that. Thing. <laughs> Check, <All> right? <laughs> well, it, it's really, it, it's a, and I tell everybody, like, basketball is about being able to dribble, pass, and shoot. Perfect those things. You know, we, we sometimes spend time in the gym and we're trying to do 360 dunks. We're trying to do all the tricky stuff and everything. But basketball comes down to the basic fundamentals is of can you pass, can you dribble, can you shoot? If you can do those things, you're going to find a way on the court. Now, you know, there, there are certain levels uh, to this thing. and But we do, you know, we invite the student body to walk on trials. We have walk on trials. We had them this year 
uh, in October. We'll have them again next year in October. So they're more than welcome to come out and try out. It's not easy. I'll, I'll be honest. It's not easy to make the team because we have a bunch of guys that we've looked at that, um, you know, that we scouted that we think are pretty good. But with that being said, there may be a Thomas Ice Griffiths somewhere out there, and we will <laughs> not turn you down if you're like if you're like Ice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All my basketball aficionados speak highly of you, and they're going to do the best they can to continue to support you, man. And we all are. And hopefully one day we can get to the point where all of our games look like tomorrow night. So that's, that's all the fans and supporters. That's the goal. That's the goal, for sure. All right, anything else, Craig? Any other uh, questions you want to let the coach before you let him go? No, I'm, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him uh, a little bit later. I'm going to get him back in front of our group. Our uh, Greensboro chapter, because uh, okay. I know folks want to talk to you directly. Okay, so I'll, I'll be okay. I'll be getting in touch with you. Okay, sounds good. So you guys tell me I'm hey. off the hot seat. I'm out of the breakfast club. No, no, I I, 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 not, nope, nope. Uh, well, I got two more questions for you. One is <laughs> one, one, one is basketball. One is kind of stupid. But so 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 the, the basketball question is: so ten years you were at Delaware, yes, and then then you spent the last three years in Temple and you yes. assistant. When you were at Temple, you were thinking, you know what, this is great. You know, I got a great program doing my thing, but I want to get back to being a head coach. Did you say, if I ever get me one more chance to be back at a, as a head coach, I'm going to do one thing differently? Or do you feel like you already had a formula where you just need the opportunity? Well, well I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I was there, I was with one of my best friends, Aaron McKee. He was the head coach, and I was his uh, associate head coach. I wasn't even really thinking about being a head coach. I was just thinking about, and this is be, being honest, I was thinking about being the best assistant that I could possibly be for him and help him mold that program. But the, the answer to that question, if there was anything I could do different from uh, when I was a head coach at University of Delaware, this is going to sound crazy, but I wanted to live closer to the university. Uh, oh. My wife and I are, we love to have the team over uh, for team meals and, and that sort of thing. And when I lived in, when I got the Delaware job, uh, we lived in Pennsylvania. We lived in Media, Pennsylvania, which is, it was 33 minutes. It took me 33 minutes to get to work. But the reason that we didn't move to Delaware was we were building a program, and I knew it was going to be tough for the first couple of years, um, and I had little kids. And I didn't want them to have to bear my cross by them going to school. And little kids can be cruel at times. Ah, your daddy don't know what he's doing. He can't, and that would have hurt them and hurt their feelings. So it requires we just stayed in Pennsylvania and we built the program up to a championship level. Now, you know, I want it to be close because my kids are grown, so they don't have to bear that. Uh, but I want I want it to be live close proximity to the university, and we do. We live 12 minutes away from from uh, campus, so now the kids can come over. Uh, the team can come over. We can have team meals and and do all those types of oh, things. Man. Another chance for us to bond as a group, and that chemistry is uh, is very very important if you're going to be a championship team. All right, so it's a tough question before I let you get out of here. You got you got to tell me because you know I'm a, I'm a hip hop guy. Who is the king of Philly? Because I don't know. Is it Beans? Is it uh? Are 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 you, are, are you uh? Do you like uh? Gilly? ARF, who is who is the who uh, has the crown of the king of Philly in your mind? You know what? I think when I was a little younger, yeah, and this probably when I was at St. Joe's, I would say it was Beans. Right now, yeah. like, don't forget about Meek Mill. Now, like, okay, okay, Meek okay, is like yeah, hot. Like he had that championship song. He had the Eagles pumping that championship song. Uh, dreams and nightmares when you know they went on that that Super Bowl run. So you know, I, it, it's uh, I'm I'm a Meek Mill guy. I'm a Meek yeah. Mill guy right. myself. So I'm gonna say so, Meek. So I, I'm I'm a little older. You remember Cool C? Yeah, yeah. With the glamorous life. Woo! You got it. You got it. <laughs> the glamorous life. That's it. Woo! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. That, was, that, was, that was some classic uh, Philly hip hop for, for uh -huh. those guys. So, uh -huh. so, so hey, hey, and you know, although yeah. although he tried to turn into a, a slash boxer at a very inopportune moment, you can't forget summertime yeah. with Will Smith. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. like international. Yeah. Hey, that's just like yeah. the yeah. 
that's the anthem to start the summer. You, you know what I mean? When they start listen, playing listen. that, you know it's summertime. It hey, when you hear when you hear Mariah Carey "All One for Christmas," you know uh, is that's the start of that's the start of Christmas. When that's you right. Hear summertime. That's the start that's of summer. That's the start of summer for sure. You got that. You got to yeah, have I it at it. every cookout. That's my it. man, my man. Okay, I got you. So you so you know you know you're Philly hip hop. So uh, you, you come on, man. Test, coach. <laughs> 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 you pass the test, coach. All right, so look, look. Oh, it's man. been an honor, and thank you so much for taking your time on this busy week. We're gonna be there tomorrow, and we're gonna be back on Saturday because uh. You know, I got nothing to do on Saturday. It's going to be another big game. We got we to get two in a row, get this winning streak started again. So thank no you so doubt. much, Coach, for everything you're doing and keep this thing going. We're going to hopefully make a run at the end of the season and get to that conference championship and anything happens when you, you know, when, when you get to a, a one elimination tournament. Uh, That's tournament. right. So, That's right. All right. So thank you so Thanks, much, guys. Coach. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Talk to you guys. Thanks, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now. All right. It's Coach Ross. Oh man, that was fun, guys. Tough man, gentlemen. I I, I wasn't expecting that, man. That, that's a cool guy. And so, you know, um, man, everyone was kind of you know not worried, but they were kind of curious. How's this going to turn out? The season started off kind of slow. We was getting Molly Watt first, first couple games, but there was, like I said, there was a something switched, and these boys start buying in and start playing some good basketball. And now, Craig, like I said on social media. It's just a common feeling to know that no matter who we play, we at least like, look like a football, uh, basketball team. We, we at least look like we know what we're doing. You know, just having a well-coached team, it just brings a little bit of peace to you. You know, so that, and I, I am confident that we definitely have a well-coached basketball team here in the NT. So that was uh, Coach yeah, Ross. I, I agree, I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, somebody asked me before the season started what what did I think NT would do with Coach Ross having to rebuild that team from the ground up and i said i said then i said wait and see he's gonna be as good if not better than what we were last year in uh uh in the caa um and it's turning out to be that way this is a good basketball team this is turning into a very good basketball team yeah they took their lumps uh early but he scheduled he scheduled tough opponents to try to, to try to get them mentally prepared and uh and to challenge them to, you know, to play at a higher level is proven out. The biggest thing for us is just we need to remain healthy. And I think, you know, yeah. it's not too far fetched to think that we can't finish maybe in the top four. Mm -hmm. And I think that's still within the realm of possibility. Like Craig said, man, let's not forget we got some guys that are banged up and out. Uh, you know, you're missing your starting center and you're also missing, um, you know, Marquavius Brown, who I think is one of the more talented kids on the oh, team. Yeah. I can't wait to see him get out there. Um, you know, and do his thing when his time comes. But we'll be patient, patient with him, man. They, he's a Brown, so, you know, he's going to do his thing when he gets out there. But I thought Coach did a tremendous job, man. And I actually thought he echoed a lot of the same sentiments you hear Coach Brown say with the football program, right? Some of the patience and we're building. And, yeah. you know, I think that's a tribute to the type of coaches we went out and we seek uh, to, to fill those vacancies we had. But um, just be patient, Aggie Nations. I think, I think that's the common theme amongst hey. our department. Have a little patience. Uh, and you know what? And, and I think I think that you got you got to give Earl Hilton some credit too because he's given these coaches the the confidence that they do have a little bit of room. It's not like you know you got to start making some panic moves and some drastic decisions or you know I'm I'm a, I'm a fire you buy you out whatever. I think especially with football, he gave Coach Brown six year <laughs> contract guarantee. And I looked over it many times. There ain't no way to get out of that thing. That's six years, right? And I, I haven't seen Coach Ross' contract, but I'm pretty sure he got the same security because they understand, you know, we do need some resources. You know, we do we do need a, a new gym. That's one thing to help with recruiting. And uh, we do we need to start setting up some some ways to, to funnel some money into NIL. But, you know, um, as long as guys are taking steps and you're seeing it, I mean, you say, okay, I can point to improvement. Then, you know, the Aggie Nation, we are tough. We're passionate, like Coach said, but Aggie Nation is smart too. We 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 have smart fans. We we know what we see, right? And um, sometimes that means we're gonna be impatient because we know we should be doing better. But when we know what the fight is and what the plan is, and we we get behind them and we, we give guys that support, you know. Um, so I'm excited. And first of all, let me switch you guys. I'm getting flustered. Hold on. Uh, and there you go. Thank you, Craig. Craig's out. Got to be in the middle. There we go. But uh, 
So that was Coach Ross, uh, and uh, you know we we got to get Coach Rob too, the ladies, uh, Lady Aggies basketball coach. They're doing big things. I mean, they're tied for first right now in the CAA. They they didn't up like like one six games straight. So um, we definitely need to uh, just to go on the other side and get Coach Rob in here. I know a lot of people want to hear from him. But of course, I, I, I say make- we don't rest until we get all head coaches on all of our lead coaches um, in every sport, yeah. right? We're equal well, opportunity uh, interviewers, so uh, you know I got to get golf on. Definitely talked about tennis, so you know all all of our student athletes and our coaches deserve that spotlight. So we'll put that down as a we got a few we can check off the list so far. So we had to start yeah. looking. Hey, so what? Them. So Craig, what do we say? Who who are the people that come on our show? What type of people come on our show? Smart people. Smart people. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, so if we got smart coaches, they want to come on the show. You know, it's an open invite and. Uh, Hey, I shot a I shot a flyer at Coach Ross. Uh oh, he got paused, Craig. It must have sit. Yeah. It, 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 it paused. Yeah. Everything paused out. You can't beat God's timing sometimes, Craig. <laughs> no, but um, That's true. what Samaj was trying to say, Aggie fans, was you know, we're gonna continue to be patient uh, with all of our sports programs. You know, our coaches are always welcome on this platform because we want them to have the opportunity to come on and talk about, you know, the building job they're doing or kind of the, the status of their program. So uh, thank you again, Coach Ross, for coming on and doing what you did. I think we lost it for a second. Are we back? Yeah, we, we, lost, we lost you for a second. Uh, we were having we an interesting oh, conversation. Man. Oh, man. We're still here. We're all still here. Okay, so that's, how, that's my that's my Wi-Fi. Gotcha. But uh, I don't yeah, know what you're talking yeah, you, about. You're looking, but... kind of, looking kind of blurry over there, man. Oh, I'm looking kind of blurry yeah, now. You gotta get them squirrels running faster on that wheel, man. To make that thing yeah. work. Right. That's crazy, man. Because you know, I'm looking crystal clear on my end, but we'll, we'll we'll get it figured out. Let me switch you guys back one more time because I keep looking at Doug right. in the middle. All right, so we'll, we'll figure it out. So, uh, so Craig, let's that, 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 segue into football though, because we got uh, okay. we we had a great conversation with with men's basketball coach, but we still got a lot of business to cover, especially next week with National mm-hmm. Signing Day. So since mm-hmm. we left off, guys, since we left off, a lot of things have been transpiring in Aggie Nation. Uh, first off, we got a uh, Doug. <laughs> we got a new hire in the, in the program, right? On the staff. We do. We got another Marsh in the family. <laughs> so that's something to be excited about. I know you guys have been uh, waiting patiently uh, for, the, for the new uh, officer coordinator to show up. So congratulations to Mr. Marsh. Welcome. Glad to have you. Ready, ready to get to work. And Craig, when I saw Craig, when I saw the name Marsh on the press release, I'm like, nah, they didn't. I'm like, these jive turkeys, now nah, they trying to they trying to be funny. They gonna name they gonna name Samaj Marsh as offensive coordinator. Shut me up because I've been I've been screaming for yeah. it. So I had to actually open the link and it said David Marsh. I didn't know who he was. He's can of paint. But he uh, obviously he's the uh, he was a former offensive coordinator at Texas Southern, and. Uh, had a really, um, really strong uh, background um, uh, in, in coaching at, uh, some, some, some different programs along the way. But he took an unconventional route. He started off, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't, he, he went to the United States Marine Corps out of high school yeah. and, and he yeah. got kind of like his, his, that like, like coaching bug when he was in the Marines. And then right. when he left the Marines, he was kind of just volunteering as a graduate assistant places and finally got some some opportunities to you know do some assistant coaches here and there. And um, at one point that led to him coming to Campbell University, where he was the office coordinator quarterbacks coach at Campbell. And after that, they, he moved to Texas Southern. So he had a non-conventional route. But one thing about him that I know is he has awesome communication skills. Yeah, he does. Uh, if anybody looked at some of his uh, some of his uh, coaching uh, uh, seminars on YouTube, uh, the yeah. man definitely knows his answers and knows. I think the thing I like about his background, I can understand why Coach uh, Coach Brown uh, uh, went with him, is that he's coached every position uh, on offense. He's coached quarterbacks. He's coached offensive line. He's coached receivers and tight ends. He's a coach running back. He's done it all, so he has an understanding. He has a good, he has a good base knowledge, a great base knowledge of what, how all those components should be interacting with each other, and what makes a good offense. 
the other thing I think you'll you will see uh, if you if you uh, take uh, I know you did the research and just like I did. Uh, he's a he's the proponent of that air raid offense. Uh, that seems to be his 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 true baby. Uh, the thing that he he cut his teeth on. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that translates with a uh, with only one quarterback back from last year's team. Uh, and uh, uh, and Kevin White, it's going to be interesting to see how that translates with the three new quarterbacks that are coming in. Uh, so spring practice is really going to be interesting because it's going to be a totally new offensive scheme. It's not what, – what we've been running for the last year, or last two or three years for that matter, is no more. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what – how he – what what aspects of, 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 uh, of that offense he brings in uh, – to uh, produce points because our biggest problem is producing points. We were producing some yardage in the second half, latter part of the season, but we were still were having trouble putting the, putting those points up on the board on a on, on any kind of basis. Uh, and uh, like people have said many times, I've heard this and to the point I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, when you're last in total offense, you got no place else to go, but uh, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but I, I'm yeah. I'm really interested to see what kind of schematics he puts into play. And, and so, Doug, what was, what was your first takeaways when you saw that he was uh, brought in as the um, uh, new office coordinator slash quarterback coach? Well, the first thing that jumped out to me about him was the fact that he had the Marine background, and you guys know I've spoke glowingly about having uh, a military component on your coaching staff. I mean, we even had Coach Donald Hauser on. To talk about discipline <laughs> during the fading year, fading games of uh, that season when we just struggled with discipline, I think in Coach Washington's last year, and he spoke about you've heard me speak about how I thought just a little touch of discipline or that extra level of discipline um, can add to your to your level of performance. Um, you heard Coach Brown speak about his ability to get the ball in his playmakers' hands, right, and and to you know do the simple things, just like Coach Coach Ross was saying dribble shoot pass right and you've heard me say in offense can, can you can you run a 10 yard out turn around and just catch the ball right those simple things make offense simple and i think coach brown recognizes that this is a guy that has experience getting the ball in his playmaker's hands i mean what he did with andrew body last year down in texas southern uh, we know body's a kid that does it with his legs and his arm uh, and they put up big numbers in the swag so you know i don't i don't get too caught up in in the record we know football is complimentary right it, there's three yep. different uh, components of playing right. football so it takes all three, and, and and when you're the offensive coordinator, sometimes you're playing to the head coach's expectations, right? Are we going to control the ball? Are we going to try to light it up? Are we trying to keep the other offense off the off the field, right? You know, those guys played against Jackson State and some other high-powered offenses that were in the swag. So the name of the game changes sometimes from conference to conference, but the good thing is, right, he does have experience um, on, on multiple levels, and I think he's an effective communicator. We talked about that. Um, but he seems like a guy that, that's going to hold guys accountable, right? And 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 also a guy that kids can relate to. So, you know, for me, I, I, I've had coaches all across the spectrum. But when I look back, it's guys like Coach Hauser and some of those guys that held me to a high level. Just like Coach Ross said, the kids want structure. You know, you want coaching. You don't know that you want structure and coaching sometimes as a young as a young man. But looking back in hindsight, you realize how important that is for your development. And so when you have good coaches that are good communicators, like we said, Coach Brown is. And your staff is good communicators because let's remember when you're the offensive coordinator you're not just coaching the quarterback room right you're coaching the entire offense as well as the other coaches right you've got to be able to effectively communicate your vision and your offense and your terminology and your scheme to everybody that's up underneath your umbrella and so he seems to have those qualities and, and those um capabilities we'll see when he gets here but i also like that he spent some time at other hbcu right he's not just a guy that's uh, not yeah. going to be able to relate to our environment. I think one of his interviews, the band was blasting in the background, and he looked just as comfortable, you know, still communicating uh, whatever he wanted to communicate during the interview. So I think he's going to fit right in. I know he has experience um, operating in a short window in the spring, right? So I'm excited about what he'll be able to do when he gets here and, and the things that our kids will learn. Because the spring's about, you know, development and, and picking up some terminology in the scheme. But we'll have a bunch of kids that will be on this team that aren't here yet, right? That's the reality of it. We're going to be a new team. Heck, we already are a new team. That's why I told guys to stop talking about 24, I mean 23, because we're in 24, man. We're a new team. And we totally said that in the last couple shows that, you know, we're going to, the roster's going to flip. And, you know, we had, you know, a bunch of concerns and guys were like, man, what we go, you know, what's, what's going to happen? 
But I think slowly, as these guys continue to commit and, and start, put their name on the line and commit to uh, A&T, that, that confidence is building and that support is building as well. So, you know, like I said, it's time to, to make sure we're rowing in the right direction, right? We're not, we don't want to be dumping water in the boat. We want everybody dumping water out of the boat and rowing in the same direction because when this thing takes off and the ship gets going in, in, the, in the right direction, you know, you're going to have a lot of folks trying to jump on board. So you might as well get rolling now, Craig. <laughs> Yeah, you're right about that, Doug. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when the wind changes direction, so does fan base. So, you know, a lot of a lot, a lot of people uh, uh, who who are uh, talking about oh uh, talking about uh, oh in 28, all of a sudden you won't be able to find them. Uh, it's kind of like the same way in basketball. Uh, when basketball season started, I heard you know we're gonna go oh in 31. Now you can't find anybody who's going, you know, anybody's bad mouth in A and T basketball. So you know, it it it, it, it like, like Coach Ross said, uh, and Coach Brown said the same thing. Uh, it it comes in the territory. I mean, they don't pay. They don't. They really don't pay that uh, any of that much attention. They they expect that, and you know, they expect to you know they expect to be ridiculed and 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 criticized when they lose and when they win. They you know that everybody wants to be your best friend. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to buy you dinner. So you know it. It, uh, it, it works out in the end. But I like to hire. I, I like to hire when I first when I first saw it. I think I was probably the only person on, on, on the entire board that said that. So, but uh, you know, uh, I've been in that hiring process for for a long time, and I know given what given what type of situation you have. You hire accordingly. It's not so much, like you said, Doug. It's not so much about uh, the, the 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 wins and losses because that's dependent. Football is dependent on everybody else doing their job too. If you go to win football game, uh, Texas Southern did not have problems about scoring points or racking up yardage. Their problem was on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. So you know uh, that's what you have to look at. And uh, you got to keep that. You got to keep. You got to keep that in mind when you start talking about uh, assessing uh, uh, coordinators and and who's who's going to do what. You know, and who 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 can be the best job. And you got a guy who can teach. And I think that's really what you're going to have to have with a young football team like we're going to have. We're yeah. going to be. We're turning over the roster. It's being turned over. I mean, it's being flipped faster than pancakes at IHOP. It's being turned over. Every single day, so uh, you know you got to have somebody who can be able to teach that. So uh, and and teach the offense and, and t teach the offense and teach the defense. So you know it is what it is, and uh, we'll we'll be okay. We'll be okay. I'm interested to see what, what the what the second half of recruiting is going to look like next Wednesday. Uh, it's like Coach Ross said, you know, uh, you can be a good team with good players, but great teams, you know. They have great players. That's what makes them great. You know, it makes great coaches. Talent, you can talk what you want to about coaching people up, but talent is talent, and there's very little substitution for that. Uh, I haven't found any. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, all, uh, yeah, you're always going to coach kids up from what they were at, uh, coming to you originally, but they have to have that guy given talent to be able to make, to, 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 to take it to the next level. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, so White Jr., I'm looking my chops if I'm Kevin White Jr. Cause I, I'm looking at some of the things he dialed up and some of those scenes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He created and um, air raid is perfect. And, and, so yeah. And, and, and all the other quarterbacks as well, when they get their opportunity, you know, that, that's a quarterback friendly system. So we know, we feel pretty confident that our, our guys can uh, put together a run game with Coach uh, Mattis and, and those guys. So he's proven that um, that's one of his strong suits. So we'll see. I'm excited. Like we said for the last three or four years, I'm excited about the unknown, right? It just keeps getting better every year, uh, not knowing what to expect. But uh, the, the, the expectations will be uh, huge this year. And I think we'll get off to a fast start. I mean, you mentioned the schedule. And I'm sure we'll have a chance to go through it. But, you know, I've already made my predictions. And I'm holding to it. All right. 
So I, I think we're having some, I know I think I'm having some internet issues on my end, so I don't know how choppy it is, but I can go after this video and do some post-production cleaned up. So hopefully I can, uh, we'll have a good version for you guys to watch tomorrow, if, if anything is kind of dragging tonight. But um, as far as David Marsh, can everybody hear me okay? Can you guys yeah. hear me pretty good? Okay. So as far as David Marsh, so I did a deep dive onto this guy's back. I mean, from the day he was hired till like today, I was, I was, uh, I was looking into his his schemes, what he did at Texas Southern, you know, uh, what, what he was trying to do at, at Campbell, listen to his interviews, because he he does a lot of media. Like he like if you put David Marsh in Google, uh, a whole bunch of stuff comes up. And he's doing like seminars. He even had a website where he was like uh designing, like showing showing like parts of his offense. You could you could like purchase how to learn how to run some of the stuff that they run so he's he's out there and one thing i noticed is that his probably greatest asset like i said is communication skills but he also has great uh interpersonal skills he builds relationships that's how he got so many opportunities so quickly coming out of the marine corps because he he built bonds and he'll he'll make a relationship and then that thing will pay off a couple months later somebody say yeah i got a job here if you want to you know, be a GA or you want to coach the office of uh, mine or this high school or whatever. So he he just steadily moved up the, through the ranks just based on who he knew and the connections he made. And he's always taken that military um, background of working with a diverse group of people. Because in the military, you don't you don't get a chance to you know recruit who you're going to be, who your who your 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 fellow soldiers are. Uh, or Marines are, you know, you, you got whoever you, whoever's is in your mix, and he was a squad leader. And so whatever in your mix, you got to work with them and speak their language and find some commonality and make it work. Same way with sports. So he's always been been able to bridge those gaps. Um, he's a, like you said, Craig, he comes from that TSU, Texas Southern, HBCU background. So he, he knows all, all about what, what it means to be at an HBCU and play HBCU football. Um, and the thing I like about him too is that he, uh, when he when he designs things, it's almost like he designs it from an office line point of view, where he's worrying about like getting guys blocked. It's not so much where I want to get my quarterback to do this or my my running back to you know be in space. It's more like I want to make sure that this safety and this outside outside linebacker are taken care of, and then the rest take care of itself. So he 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 has a, a, a kind of unique way of, of envisioning things. Um, I'm excited. I when I first heard the who was David Marsh, I, you know, I wasn't sure. I'm pretty much all in now. I think this is going to be a tremendous upgrade over Chris Young, right? I think um, I think um, you're going to see immediately just the offense moving faster. I think he's he's going to be a more of a quick pace guy, and um, he's going to stay committed to that run. He has unique ways of getting that running game. He's not just run up the middle and, and if that don't work, start throwing, you know, four verticals. I, I think he has a he has a process he's going to follow, uh, and he's here early enough where he can install for the, throughout the whole spring. I think that was probably one of the things that hurt us last year that we didn't really get a full spring camp of development. You know, um, a guys some of our guys came in late and the install wasn't complete. So I think we'll we'll be ahead of the curve now. Um, so David Marsh is a new offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach. Now, when I, at the last show we had, well, one of the shows we talked about was my Christmas wish list, and I said I wanted a quarterback guru. I, I'm not sure if this guy will fit the bill, the bill as a quarterback guru. I think he knows the, what he wants from a quarterback. He's not a quarterback whisperer, I, don't, I wouldn't say, right? Um, also... Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of some some being pessimistic here. Uh, devil's advocate. Uh, his team. Well, I don't know how much the offense had to do with it, but I know Texas Southern was one of the the second to most penalized teams in the SWAC. So we got we got to be we got to be cognizant of that. Um, and they also didn't have the. Uh, they were like the least. They were towards the bottom in ball uh, in time of possession. So if that offense wasn't working, they would get off the field quick, and they would put a lot of stress on that defense. So, so those are two things. If you are still kind of on the fence, those are two things you might want to look out for when it comes to um, Coach Marsh. But uh, like I say, I, I'm excited. I think it's an upgrade over Chris Young. Where do we fit 
finished in, in penalty yardage last year in, in the conference. The upper half, on the good side or the bad side, I think we were much improved in penalty yardage. Yeah, we much yeah, improved we were. in the previous year. So I'm not worried about the penalty situation. I got to follow right. Coach Brown's footsteps on, the, on, on his doorstep, and I think he's got that under control. That's one area, the discipline, that we saw a major improvement in. So, you know, you'd like to think that that will be something that will be uh, something that we will going forward. So, okay. Um, and like I say, you know, he basically what they did at camp at, at Texas Southern would be perfect for KJ White. Um, you know, to, 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 to get that quarterback, um, that, some of the stuff they did with the, with the air raid and having her run out the pocket and, and, and make decisions like that. Um, I'm not so sure how that fits in with Justin Fomby. So I, I don't know. Because um, Fomby seemed to me more be like a pocket guy. He wanted, he wanted to throw on time and, you know, he just get his feet set, get the ball out of his hand quick. I'm not sure how that jives with Fomby's skill set. But Coach Marsh in his interview says that he's flexible, that he can cater his scheme around his personnel. So yeah. and, you know, and he also said on one of those highlights on the clip when yeah. his quarterback was running that hey, we didn't recruit this guy to come and score a touchdown, run the ball. Uh, the kid had an option to get out of bounds, and he mentioned I'd rather see him get out of bounds uh, right. versus taking the hit. So he understands right. you know protecting your quarterback, and a lot of times you run just to keep the defense honest, right? Like. Kevin White Jr. is a special kid that can take it to the house anytime he touches the football, right? But I don't necessarily need my quarterback to do that every time. Sometimes I just need him to run to keep the defense honest, right? To make everybody stay at home. So I think Bombi and the rest of our quarterbacks um, will definitely have the ability to, to, to hold guys honest and keep guys honest. Um, that defensive end or that back or whoever's on the edge. I mean, that's part of the offense, right? That's why that's how you scheme it up. And again, it's his job to uh, fit his offense to our personnel. So, you know, he's got a whole offseason to, to work on those things. So we'll um, we want to welcome Mr. Coach uh, David Marsh to the Aggie family. And I guess we'll be seeing him around the campus pretty soon, and hopefully uh, next by next week he'll even have some more weapons to play with. We were excited last time we met. We were excited about what we brought in for early signing period. And uh, Craig, we got one more one more big. Uh, Big day coming up next Wednesday, week from today. Uh, and that's the, uh, the the traditional national signing day. How many guys are you expecting us to uh, bring in? And when it's all said and done, how many guys do you think we're going to have? For, uh, um, oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, I expect we'll probably sign somewhere between seven or eight guys, seven or seven. eight, really? uh, so, somewhere uh, next, next, next week. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was any more than that. Uh, but I, I expect it's around a half dozen, half dozen to eight guys to be about right. And so, and so after after early signing period, both of you gentlemen, um, both of you gentlemen had a, a A grade for the <laughs> coaching staff and what, what they were able to accomplish early signing period. So, um, are you guys based on some of the commitments you've been seeing the last couple of days? Are you still in the A range, or has that has that grade gone down, or the, is it A plus plus? How, how you feel right now, Dougie? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm holding true with my A, man. You know, and I told you we've been highlighting guys, yeah. and we've had our spotlight on guys, and we've been on that recruiting trail out there with our coaches as well. And to see some of the guys that we've been targeting and following, and the guys we've offered. To go ahead and make that step and that decision to come to AT. I um, mean, that's just awesome. That lets you know these guys are doing a tremendous job um, to bring in Jody, a uh, big Jody Freeman. I mean, he's a freight yeah. train. That kid, freight train Freeman. I saw the kid dunk a basketball <laughs> after practice one day, uh, six, seven. I uh, think the guy lifted his 360, which, you know, his weight may fluctuate. You know, again, Coach Mattis is used to working with all types of clay, and I believe he can mold this young man into a, a successful a football player. Um, we got hopefully we can get his, his coach on the show next week. Uh, Shavar, uh, one of my former teammates, is one of his trainers, and I know another okay. one of his guys, uh, Sean McClain. So, some former Aggies, he's got ties to former Aggies, and you know, we're glad to have him in the fold. But I, I'm expecting big things from him and, and excited to see his development, right? Like, that's what I get most excited about when we get recruits, man. I love to see those guys show up, as you know, and just watch them develop over their time here at AT and eventually see them walk across the stage and receive their degree. 
Um, but yeah, man, holding true with that A, you got big Jody Freeman. Oh man, you brought in a big web and the and the D tackles uh from, from Florida. I mean, you guys have been beating the door, beating the beating the table looking for the D tackles. They're coming in, but tremendous athletes. I don't know that we've had um these type of bodies come in the building. I know we had Caleb Jones come in um, you know, a few years back, but we don't get too many six six guys at 300 pounds that can run like a deer and uh, can put pressure on the quarterback up the middle, from the side, the edge, everywhere, play across the defensive line. You don't see a lot of guys like that. And we talked about Coach Lang and his ability, right? And could he go down to Florida and find some of those athletes? And it appears that he did. I'm glad he, he made his way back up here. He didn't stay too long. <laughs> you know, there was some guys out there throwing his name around and that fam you had uh, him and, and Coach Gallon. But again, that speaks to their level of coaching and, and, and they're sought after the guys and eventually they'll have that opportunity to go be head coaches somewhere but tremendous job by those guys out on the recruiting trail you know what the old wiley vet coach keith henry can do out there man he's just doing what he does every year those guys are uh, beating the bushes as they say and 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 and, and, and still out there recruiting so i think we're, we're in for a few more surprises man uh you got maddox the transfer um there at rover or safety I think he's a player. Uh, he's a grad transfer, and I think he's maybe a plug-and-play guy. So they're addressing needs. Those guys are familiar of, familiar with um, the needs that we needed to address, and they're seeming to continue to chug away at it. So A-plus for me. Keep it up. So, yeah, same, yeah. For me too. Same, same for me, too. Uh, most of that early period was designed to, uh, to improve the areas on the offense where we were where we were deficient and uh uh that was at the quarterback position and uh also at the uh wide receiver position we spent a lot of we spent a lot of time and resources in, 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 in upgrading those two uh those two positions on that side of the ball uh, brought in a couple of uh couple of uh linebackers during that time uh we've had another since then uh which brings our total up to three you know bona fide uh, linebackers, uh, which will give us some additional, which gives us some depth. Uh, the kid who comes in here from what's Valdosta State, uh, oh. that guy can play. He can flat play. He's been starting for them for a couple of years. Team captain as a freshman. That's a that's a kid that right out the box. The first thing that screams at me is leadership. I, I don't know too many freshmen, true freshmen, come in and be team captains on, on a football team, not on a college football team. But it should tell you some about some about that man's uh, that young man's intensity and his drive and and uh, his focus. Uh, so uh, uh, that's a that's a great pickup. Uh, the uh, the two defensive tackles. If you like run stoppers, I don't know if you guys have looked at uh, Jacob Jenkins's uh, film. But if you like a guy who can just plug a hole, people are talking about, you know, what we're going, you know, we need a run stopper when Caleb Jones left out. And uh, that was the sore point for us right in the middle of our defensive line last year. Yeah. The, Caleb, Caleb was about, when they listed him at six foot, he was about 5'11 and probably right around 290, 295 or so. This kid is a legit, you know, 6'3. 300 325 pounds and if you look at his film you can't move him they were double team blocks that he was just literally just slinging people off with one arm this he's a monster uh uh he's a perfect nose tackle if you're looking for a guy to play with nose up on the center he's prototype you you're gonna like you're gonna like him i put it like that uh I, I see in him a lot of what I saw in Caleb Jones. I just see, I, actually, I see a guy who's probably a little bit further along than Jones was when he came in as a freshman. So we'll see, we'll see. But I, I really, I really like, I really like uh, Jacob Jenkins. I, I really was impressed with him. All right, so guys, let me let me read you guys a quote real quick. All right, this is uh, from last season. The last season, um, in the last game of the year. Coach Brown, he said, first and foremost, we're going to evaluate every aspect of our program, from how we do things to the coaches, how we call plays, and look at what changes need to be made for the betterment of our program. Then our focus is shifting to recruiting. If you look at our team compared to some of the teams we face this season, we need more size on both sides of the ball, especially defensively. 
So our focus is on finding some bigger body guys up front to help us stop the run defensively. That's what Coach Brown said uh, in the post-game press conference after Campbell and, uh, you know, finished the season 1-10. and 10. So that was his mandate uh, for himself and his, his staff going through this offseason. And uh, I would say for the most part um, that – that process has been has 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 been continued. So he um he definitely made he looked at his coaching staff. He he definitely made change the offensive coordinator. They're going to change the way they call some plays, especially on offense. And uh, he's definitely added more size um, to both sides of the ball at this point. The only issue I I would still have is obviously the interior of that line. I know Craig, we got some commitments from these deep tackles um they are high school guys right so they're not they're not portal uh or juco guys they're, they're just high school true freshmen and we've seen it now i'm not i'm not someone says it can't happen because we saw caleb jones right. you know, prior to caleb jones i probably would told you it couldn't happen so caleb jones changed my mind i'm believing you can't get a true freshman to put his hand in the dirt and make an impact his first year um, I wouldn't bank, bet my mortgage on that, but it has happened. It's not it's not totally impossible. Um, but personally, I would like for us to, you know, if I'm just going to be super greedy, I'd like for us to somehow get some, you know, um, some tackle transfers from some some somebody else's college program to come in here to, to this spring and con- contribute immediately on the front line. And also, we have maybe one more veteran inside linebacker uh, to replace uh, B.J. Turner. That would probably make me feel a lot better, too. But uh, I can definitely see the plan in motion. You know, I'm trusting the process right now. Trust the process. Uh, trusting the process. And, and next week, we'll, we'll get all into it. We can probably have a whole bunch of videos. Doug promises he's going to get us a, a guest. So, you know. I guess Doug, yeah. I think, I think what's your record on, on getting delivering guests? You're about one for three. I'm batting a thousand. Got us, uh, I'm batting a thousand. Got, Come on. You're not, you ain't batting a thousand. You got, you got us, a Coach. You got us, Coach Hauser. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back down my list. I'm, I'm sure I got a few. <laughs> yeah. So, so we will probably try to have some guests for you guys next week and uh, oh, no. a ton of video on some of these recruits. Um, but. Um, also, yeah, also before we get out here, let's talk about the schedule real quick. Because the schedule came out, and boy, that's it's, – it's a lot of games that are close around, you know, in the vicinity, but that is um, – it's, it's going to be some challenges there too. So we start off Thursday night, August 29th at Wake Forest. Uh, first time we played Wake Forest since back in your day, Dougie, right? Was it 2004? 2004. That's it. Yeah. Marshall Glenn, Marshall Glenn made a mistake of throwing the interception, and then he tried to make a tackle, and that pretty much was the end of his career, not his in his season at least at A and T, because uh, that show that came out and uh, that was he was on ice for a while. So after after the after Wake Forest, the following week, September the seventh, is uh, that's going to be first game back here. Truly Stadium, and that's going to be against Winston Salem State. I don't know. I don't think we, we haven't played Winston Salem State since what 2009, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, excited for that home opener, and you know it's going to be a party. Look for the Aggies to come out and dominate. All right, we we'll get the season off, get our home, get a home win going for the first time in Coach Brown's regime. So that'll be exciting. Then Craig after that September the 14th. We're back here in Greensboro. So we got a lot of great. We got a lot of games in the state of North Carolina and South Carolina. We, we're back yeah. here in Greensboro, another home game. This time against Delaware, and we played them um, very close last year. And I remember some 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 uh, inclement weather, but that was one of our best showings on the road last year for their homecoming. And uh, we, we they come back here September fourteenth, University of Delaware. Yeah, we were probably a couple of plays away from winning that thing, and uh, we had a. Unfortunately, uh, we had a. We had some turn We had a turnover at the most inopportune time when we were driving for a chance to take the lead. Uh, we found out that we could. We, we could. Uh, you know, Delaware. Delaware uh, went 
um, got to the quarterfinals of the FCS. We can play with these guys. There, yeah. this is not. You know, there was there was some doubt uh, going into last year whether we were all where we could compete on that level or not. Uh, we can play with these guys and we can win this ball game at home. Uh, we just have to we just have to uh, eliminate the mistakes that cost us uh, that ball game up there. I think we had three turnovers. We had a fumble right at the goal line. The ball goes out the back of the end zone. We we scored there. We up two scores on these guys. So uh, it, it's uh, Delaware doesn't frighten me anymore. And, and they look, don't frighten. What a tremendous opportunity for Coach Brown to get his first CAA win at home, right? And first yep. CAA win, and also send Delaware on their way outside the conference since they're moving on to uh, greener pastures in their eyes. So. You know, I, that would be an awesome win for Coach Brown to pick up um, against the University of Delaware. So. so after Delaware, September the 21st, we then have to get back on the road again. Um, and we go travel down 85 to uh, those dirty buzzards in Durham on Fayetteville Street. We're going to face our arch rival, North Carolina Central, and they've been decimated by the transfer portal and graduation. So I don't know what type of program they're going to have by the time we face them. Uh, they really going to have to do a lot in, uh, next next Wednesday which is signing day to fill some of those holes that they, they, they're losing. Um, and they really might be uh, one of those years where you just kind of come back down to earth and they've been flying high for the last two years at least. And we might see uh, that leveling out. So we'll that'll be an interesting matchup. Central on the 21st. Mm -hmm. You guys excited about that game? Man, you know, it's about we, us, and our. So, man, yes, yes, you know, yes, that's yes. going to be our – that's going to be another one of our coming out parties. That's what we're going to announce to the HBCU world that we're back, right? And we're yeah. back on top. And then a uh, little brother can go on and get back in the back seat while, yeah. while we drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Restore order, right? We're going to go up there and, uh, you know, we're going to nuke the coop, as I say. We're going to, we're going to blow the <laughs> like that. We're going to put on t shirt. Nuke the coop. <laughs> That's pretty good, baby. That's right. pretty good. Yeah, thank you. So, so after we beat up on Central, then Craig, we uh, travel again. So now, see, we got games at home, and then we got a couple in the row, on the row in a row, and we got three straight in a row. And the second one out of that trifecta is at South Carolina State. So we go to Orangeburg yeah. after Central, another HBCU rivalry. And this is a uh, new head coach, uh, Chennis Berry, former AT office coordinator, and the lines coach. So that's going to be interesting to see what type of program he's able to establish in, in a short time. On, uh, we'll see them on September 28th, Greg. Yeah, it's going to be kind of odd uh, going down to South Carolina State and uh, and, and not having Buddy on the sideline. I mean, yeah. but, but that's going to be weird. That's going to be really weird. Uh, 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 but Chinas Berry, you know, did a did a great job down at uh, uh, Benedict, and uh, they's moving over to South Carolina State. It'll be interesting to see what type of team he puts together that first year. Uh, South Carolina State has some talent, uh, has some pretty good talent. They brought in a couple, but uh, they, they, they really beefed up their running game. Uh, so they're going to run the football. Uh, that's what they do. Uh, I think the big question for them is what they're going to do about quarterback. Now, they got a transfer kid in, uh, FBS kid that transferred in, but you know how that, you know, it, it takes time. It takes time with any – anytime you change quarterbacks, you have a new quarterback and a new system, uh, new coach, uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of time. So it'll be an interesting ball game. A lot of a t fans love to travel down there, so that should be a pretty good one. Yeah, and then we uh, – last of that three-game road trip, we go to uh, Richmond the following week, October the 5th, and we go up to uh, – Richmond's a playoff team. Obviously, they beat the hell out of Central <laughs> in the first round of the playoffs this past year. And uh, I'm not sure what they return, but they're always a good program. We had one of their guys from the radio show on our show last year. So they, you know, they they know what they're doing. But we go up to Richmond and uh, try to get some revenge on those guys, Richmond Spiders. Okay, we got a shot, Dougie? Uh, well, you know, I think it'll be a good measuring stick for us. Um, yeah. we we'll at time in the season when we have some good film on them. And, you know, as I say, it's not who you play, it's when you play them. So we'll see. You never know. Fires leading up until that point, and hopefully the eggs will be on a roll. You know, maybe we'll catch Richmond in that early game phase. You know, last year they struggled through the first four games before they settled in on a quarterback. So I think catching them early is a good thing. Um, 
So we'll have two teams at that point that will both be in the hunt for a CAA title. So, you know, we'll, we'll put the ball down and we'll see what happens. Gotcha. So after that, then, you know, we, we you know, have finally get a chance to come back to the friendly confines of Truist Stadium. And this is going to be homecoming. G-Ho. We play uh, Hampton October 19th. It's earlier this year. So the weather should be super good, super warm. G-Ho is on October 19th against Hampton. That's going to be bananas. Uh, you know, obviously that rivalry that, that this, it's like the CAA is trying to make this a rivalry. If it, if it wasn't, if there wasn't a strong rivalry before with all these basketball matchups and, and prime time, by the time we play Central, I mean, play, we play Hampton again in football for homecoming, this is going to be, you know, just, a, you know, this blood sport. So, um, I think we definitely are due. Coach Brown is definitely due for a homecoming victory. Got to, got to start getting one on his belt. You know, uh, Broadway never lost on homecoming, so Coach Brown needs to get off the schneid quickly and get his homecoming victory. Uh, after that, October 6, 26, go back on the road, but we're still in North Carolina. Go down to Bowie's Creek. That's going towards uh, Fayetteville. That's not too far. So um, play Campbell University on October 26. Then we go back. Uh, up on the uh, here at home, come back home. We play William and Mary. So that's going to be special for Coach Coach Brown. He's going to see his old boss and some of probably his old fellow coaches. Maybe some old uh, uh, players he coach. William and Mary comes to Greensboro on November the second. That should be pretty cool, huh, Craig? Yeah, that's going to be a that's going to be a reunion. Uh, 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 Mike London and uh, Mike London and. Uh, uh, and uh, Coach Brown uh, are close, and and, and they're very close, and uh, uh, they have a great mutual respect for each other. Um, uh, it's gonna that's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be an interesting ball game, a good ball game. Uh, I'm anxious to see. Uh, I haven't seen William and Mary except for on TV for the last couple of years, but they're a solid football team. Uh, they have their moments where they are they look really really good, and they have some moments where they're not so great. So uh, we'll yeah. see. Uh, but they're uh, you know they're they're uh, they're a solid program now. Uh, London has yeah. done an excellent job up there since he's taken over. Two years ago, they won the CAA. I think we were up to like fourth yeah. or fifth in the nation. So they you know yeah. they got to stick around the playoffs. So so they they got some they got uh, they got a program. They got resources and they got players. And and Mike Lennon knows what he's doing. He's won national yeah. championship at Richmond. So he knows what he's doing. And uh, Coach Brown hopefully knows him. So they right. <laughs> they'll be able to count each other. Yeah. And so, you know we got we got other guys on the staff, man. That have, have got some ties to coaches on their staff. Yeah. So it, it'll be a neat. Uh, home, home, well, not a homecoming, but a, a neat meetup between those two staffs, and um, they sh share similar philosophies and some aspects. And you know, oh, that'll be a big game for recruiting as well. You know, the loser of that game might be out of the CAA race. So it's that point in the season where every win is a big win, and um, you've got tape on guys. So a lot of it will come down to coaching and execution. Hopefully, we we're able to get some things rolling during that time of the year, man. So after William and Mary on November second, the, the next two weeks, man, we got boy, they, they don't do us no favors. I tell you, the CAA is not doing us any favors in in November because man, we got to go uh, two games back to back on the road. First one's November 9th against Villanova, and then after that, we got to go back to Baltimore on November sixteenth. So Villanova and Townsend University uh, in consecutive weeks. November 9th, November 16th. That's tough. Guys, that's pretty tough, right? Yeah, those those two games uh, are games that are, I can honestly say we were physically beaten up front <laughs> yeah. last year against both yeah. of those teams. Now, they had a distinct advantage on us as far as uh, strength up in the trenches. Now, how that's going to translate this year, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Townsend was loaded with a bunch of gra uh, bunch of uh, graduate and COVID transfers. I think they had 29 on that team. Those guys are gone. Uh, they went. They got to the semifinals of the FCS, but again, we have 29 six-year guys on your on your roster. You should be getting to the to the semifinals of the FCS. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, they got a solid coaching staff, but that's a lot of players to have to replace at one time. Villanova somewhat the same situation. 
twenty six guys who were six year players coming off of the the COVID the COVID and uh, grad transfers, and uh, those guys are gone. So, and that's another team that did well and got to the quarterfinals. So, you know, the the roster turnover. Uh, people have to understand that these teams that we ran up against last year, we were, you know, we were about as green as grass. But most of these teams had stockpiled players during that whole COVID period for about two years, and they brought in grad transfers on top of grad transfers on top of the guys that they retained, and they kept them there, and they came in with very experienced, very very deep teams, but as all things must come to an end one day and it's over with now. Now they have to replace those people. And the portal ain't exactly been putting out. I mean, there's a lot of people in the portal, but I am not too sure if you want to use the portal to try to replace all those guys at one time. Uh, so the makeup of those rosters is going to be a lot different. So the lay of the land, you know, we'll have to wait and see get through spring practice and through, get through the early part of the season, uh, the top half of the season, we'll have a better idea of where those teams actually stand uh, versus what they were last year. Uh, all these preseason polls are going to be based on what you did, always based on what you did last year, not based on what you got as far as a team this year is concerned. So I think it's going to be definitely different. And then following uh, the following week, November 23rd, we face Elon, and that's that's our home game. It'll be senior day, last home game of the season. Hopefully that will be, uh, you know, propelling us to the playoffs. Maybe, you know, we shocked the world and finished strong and got the chance to go to the FCS playoffs this year. So that's our that's our 12-game season. Somebody mentioned in the chat that uh, before homecoming, we have our, our bye week. So our bye week is in between Richmond on the 5th, and homecoming on 19th. So we have a bye in between that to get ready. So we have a three-game road trip, a bye, and then homecoming. So hopefully that will give us a, a, a chance to catch our breath for, for the home stretch. But, we guys, we need to get out of here. It's already been an hour and a half. Um, tomorrow is February 1. That's a national holiday if you're an Aggie. I'm going to try. I always say it. Me and my wife, I'll say every year we're going to try to go to the breakfast. They have a little, uh, a little uh, celebration over at the school. I think starts at like seven o'clock in the morning. That's why we usually don't make it. But uh, our guy Freeze on the board, Jelani, Dr. Jelani Favors, he will be part of a uh, uh, panel discussion um, about the four, the anti four, and the whole sit-in movement. So um, there's going to be a breakfast and a program there, uh, and that's going to be the alumni event center, I believe. So if you guys want to go out there, seven o'clock, and the program starts at eight. I'm going to try to be out there, but I can't be no promises. And, uh, of course, the game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We'll see our guy, Coach Ross, see what he got in store. So, uh, let's do some last words. Uh, Doug, give me, give me something to go on. Hey, man, I just want to tell everybody, enjoy your 1890 – I mean, excuse, enjoy your February 1. Yeah. If you get a chance, go ahead and throw 1891 uh, yeah. in the fun every morning. So, you know, that's, that's what our plan is. We're going to try to uh, and get in touch with a few folks, man, and remind them how great A&T is and how much we need people's support. So, again, I told you that was my charge for uh, the new year here, so I'm trying to follow through with that. And uh, just look forward to fellowship in this month, man. You know, February is a month. I know it's, going, it's one of the shorter months in the year um, for most years, um, but this we want to make sure that we enjoy every single day in February and celebrate each other, um, not only um, the February one and the A&T folk, but our entire culture. So, you know, let's kick it off just right. Yes, sir. All right, Craig, take us home. Uh, yeah, for uh, I think a lot of people uh, got uh, letters uh, earlier this week or late last week uh, letting you know that uh, in order to maintain on the stay on the priority purchase uh, uh, for, for uh, tickets and tailgate passes, you must now be a member of the AAF to be on that priority purchase uh, uh, roster. So if you haven't joined the AAF uh, and you have been getting season tickets beforehand, you you need to go ahead and join up now before the uh, before uh, the uh, the uh, the prices are set. They usually are set in April. They usually they let you know in April how much those tickets are going to be, and then they start sell uh, start handing those out in May. 
So uh, if you haven't if you haven't joined AAF, like Doug said, you can go online and join the 1891 Club. Or if you prefer, uh, join one of your local chapters, preferably here you're in the triad area. You can join the uh, you can join the uh, Greensboro chapter of the AAF, and uh, you can either uh, uh, do it online or you can contact me directly at cturner291 at aol.com. Uh, that's my email. Uh, you just drop me a line, and uh, we'll get you we'll get you uh, situated uh, as a member of AAF so you can keep that priority purchase uh, ticket uh, 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 status uh, because tickets are going to be tickets with this schedule. They're probably going to, they're probably going to be, uh, you know, those season tickets are hard to come by are getting harder to come by. The choice seats are getting harder to come by every year. And that, uh, and that also not only does it for uh, football, but it also al allows you to get priority purchase uh, uh, uh benefits for basketball as well so uh again uh get uh you know uh, like i said go online join the aaf or contact us directly and again the address my uh, email address is cturner291 at aol.com yeah i'll put that in the uh, description of the, of the video too all right guys let's get out of here we don't want to be too long but uh game tomorrow night seven fed one our national holidays is uh, is tomorrow, and that starts off Black History Month. So we're gonna all be in, engulfed in that in that history and culture, what our universe is all about. So until next time, we get next week, guys. We're gonna be have a big uh, Blue Death After Dark uh, National Sign Day show. We're gonna hopefully have some guests if Doug can do it. He's promising, so we'll see. But uh, till then, for Doug Brown, the President Craig Turner, I am Samaj Marsh. This has been a special episode of Inside the Valley. Shout out to Coach Ross for coming through. Yes. And uh, see you guys next week. Peace. Thank you, Pride. Thank you, Pride. Thank you, Pride.